Hello, I'm Andy and welcome to Element 14 Presents. Like most people, I've been affected by the recent increase in energy prices. So I'm interested in where that energy is being used. My thought is to put uh, remote temperature sensors around the house and have those feed to some kind of centralised dashboard. That helped me monitor where my energy is being used. So the system we're going to be using for monitoring temperatures is a number of remote temperature sensors. These are going to be based around a Raspberry Pi Pico, so that will need a Wi-Fi module, a temperature sensor and some kind of battery management. And that's all going to feed into a dashboard and the dashboard is going to be based around a Raspberry Pi uh, connected to a external hard disk. Our temperature data will be collated by a system consisting of a Raspberry Pi connected to an external power supply and hard disk and a software stack based around four key components. Mosquito is a broker for MQTT, the protocol for the Internet of Things. Influx database is a time series database, so it's ideal for connecting our time-based data from our sensors. Node-RED is a visual tool for connecting everything together um, that allows us to take the data from our MQTT broker and pass it through to InfluxDB. And finally, Grafana is a dashboarding system that allows us to see our data in various forms such as charts, graphs and alerts. The parts for this project are a Pi Pico, a Wi-Fi module, although of course the new Pico W would work just as well, a LiPo battery, a prototyping board, a battery regulator, a small switch and a project box. This one's 3D printed but you can buy them of a suitable size. For the monitoring system we've got a Raspberry Pi, a SATA hard disk, a ATX power supply and a USB to SATA adapter cable. So the setup for the monitoring server is quite involved so we've broken that out into a separate video. As I was running the project from batteries, I did some very basic calculations to work out how much power was going to be required, and it looked like the batteries weren't going to last very long at all. So I took a look in the SDK, and there was an example there for how to reduce the power consumption. Um, and basically what it does is it um, adjusts the various clocks on the power Pi Pico. So Pi Pico's actually got quite a lot of clocks. It's got uh, one for the real-time clock, uh, one for the main system processor, one for the USB, uh, one for the ADC and one for the uh, peripherals that uh, connect to it. These are all sort of multiplexed together so we can actually sort of chop and change these about a bit. So what I've done is I've flashed different versions of code onto uh, a number of different Picos with uh, different rates of clocks and we can see what happens to the power consumption of a simple blink sketch uh, with different uh, clock settings. So a quick look at the experimental setup here. I've got a USB extender cable I've chopped in half and then I've soldered that into a breakout board and that breakout board then allows me to connect the multimeter in series with the uh, power line and, and measure how much current is being consumed. So here's our first board. This is just a bog standard sketch for Blink. Uh, you see it just uh, blinks the LED on and off and that's sort of bouncing between 22 and 24 milliamps. So that's our baseline. So let's see how much we can improve on that. So one of the examples I found in the SDK was to reclock the main processor using the USB clock. So we can see there that's made quite a, a big difference. It's dropped us down from 22, 24 to 11 or 9 so what that probably tells us is we're using 2 milliamps when the LEDs are turned on so that's a good start let's see if we can do any better than that in our previous example we were clocking the main processor from the USB clock and that runs at 48 megahertz so that brought us down quite substantially I also found in the SDK an example that allowed us to clock at other clock speeds and that's determined based on the internal oscillators and the number of dividers that uh, you can put in place so that allowed me to bring that uh, clock speed down to 10 megahertz and you can see now our current consumption is sort of bouncing between 4 milliamps and 
and about 7 milliamps. So again, quite considerably down on our initial 24. But um, there was a couple of things I saw in the SDK that thought um, we could bring this even lower. So I thought I'd try those as well. There was one last thing mentioned in the SDK documentation, which was to put the Pi Pico into a sleep mode. Um, and it was very easy to get it into the sleep mode, but not so easy to get it back out again. So I've decided just to stick with the clock change mechanism that uh, brings our current consumption right down and we should get a bit more life out of the uh, batteries. I'll do uh, some experiments uh, over the next few days and see how much life I'm getting from, from those batteries. Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics and even some new releases just to find out what's inside. So let's take a look at the code we've putting onto the Pi Pico. I've written this in C so we could take advantage of low power functionality, which wasn't available in Python at the time. So we start with some libraries. Got one for the Wi-Fi library, one for the MQTT, that's PubSub, and DHT is the library for the temperature sensor. Low power is my ported version of the SDK code, and real-time clock is a clock that allows us to uh, sleep for a period of time, we'll see that later. And secrets is where we keep things like our Wi-Fi password and MQTT passwords, and here's where we set that up, just some simple variables. Got some pins defined here. We're using one for the temperature sensor on pin 15, one for reset, and one for monitoring the battery status using the LiPo shim. We need to have a unique topic for our MQTT. So I set that to outside and we'll change that each time we compile for a different device. Got a IP address for our MQTT broker. As it says, be nice to resolve that using MDNS. I believe that's possible to resolve that from dashboard.local, uh, but not actually got that working at this time. Got some variables for our Wi-Fi client and our MQTT client. And then we set up our pins, connect to the Wi-Fi, we fail to connect we do a hard reset and then we try to connect to MQTT and send our initial connection message uh, on the topic of connect um, so that could be any topic I use connect for debugging reading the temperature reading the battery status and then send that as a message in MQTT we set the thing to low power as the comment says we can't do much at this point um, but we can use the runtime real-time clock. So we set that up, we wait for 60 seconds, and then we do a hard reset. So that works by uh, taking that reset pin and connecting it across to the run pin on the Pi Pico. And the code for that is just below here. And we set that to low, and that resets the whole thing. So it'll start again from the top, reconnect to the Wi-Fi, reread the temperature and the battery status, send another message and then wait another 60 seconds before resetting. So it, it never gets beyond setup. Um, it always just keeps doing this uh, read and reset loop. So once the data leaves the Pi Picos, it goes into MQTT and is picked up here by Node Red. It's listening for this sensor topic and the hashtag there means it listens for all topics starting on that prefix. We add a timestamp. We're doing that on the Pi so we've got consistent timestamps across all the sensors and we don't need to worry about clock synchronization. We then trim our topic. There's a little function here that just trims everything after the slash. So we'll get outdoor, office, and etc. getting passed on. We then split our flow three ways, and we'll just take a look at one of those. Uh, so rather than the payload, we just take payload.t, so that's gonna be the number 20, and for our measurement message, we're going to use the word temperature. We do the same for the humidity and battery. And then we pass those on to this template node, and that takes the payload, so the, the number 20 in this case, uh, for the temperature, the timestamp, and the topic, which if you remember now, we trimmed down, so that will just be office, outdoor, etc. And that same template gets used for 
uh, three times for the, each of the types and we'll pump that into influx database and I've got a little debug node there to allow us to see what was getting sent into the database. Uh, a couple more sort of sets of blocks for debugging, one for listening for connect messages and the other one which uh, allows us to manually inject test messages into the flow so we can test that whole flow without having the Pi Picos up and running. To get our data out of the Linflux database, we use a language called Flux. It's not the easiest language for a novice, so what I did was I used the query builder on the Influx DB dashboard and then edited the resulting script and pasted it into the uh, Grafana dashboard. So here we are in the Grafana dashboard. You can see I've set up various widgets for displaying the data. We'll dig into one of those in a bit of detail. If we edit that, we can see that Flux language that I've copied over from the Influx uh, dashboard. A little bit of a modification here to capture the field name from the location, and then it aggregates it all to the uh, time window that we can see configured on the right hand side there. And effectively we're using the very similar code for each of our three widgets. Um, and then we can display that in different ways. So we've got the current temperature there for a couple of tensors, and we've got the temperature and humidity over time. And our battery check will show us green if the battery is good, and it will go red if the uh, LiPo board reports that the battery is failing. I'm going to be placing my sensors all around the house. Here's one I set up in the lounge. As they're battery powered, you can place them absolutely anywhere. Uh, probably best out of direct sunlight. And then here's another one I set up outside. This is in the waterproof box, of course. And again, it needs to be out of the bright sunlight, so it's just here on the edge of the house. So here's the dashboard and the, some of the temperature being recorded. Uh, my plan is to look at the rate of change of the outside temperature versus the inside temperature and hopefully that will tell me how well my house is insulated and I can test that in various places around the house with the different sensors. So the system's up and running and it's collecting temperature data from those sensors around the house and we'll be using that for optimising our energy consumption and working out which rooms are perhaps lacking in insulation. And I'm sure that Ming stack will come in handy too for other projects based around sensors. One thing to be worked out though is the power supply and that is in a service power supply. So it's got a little fan in it um, which generates quite a lot of noise. So I'll either be uh, working out a way of optimising that or perhaps putting in an alternate power supply. If you've got any good ideas for powering a Pi and a hard disk then please let us know on the Element 14 community.